Well, guys, there are some warning shots going out to Elon Musk from everywhere, it seems. I know it's nothing new going on there at all, nothing new at all, but that also doesn't mean that there's not some truth in it either. So as much as we all love Elon, that doesn't mean that everything he does is great and perfect and absolutely the best decision for Tesla. There are some drawbacks for sure and you have to be willing to assess those and take them seriously or else you could make some serious mistakes with your Tesla stock. So let's discuss that today as I found something honestly really interesting guys and I really wanted to share it with you. I just ask in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing to It's Super Easy To Do if you like the truth without the hype. And just like Elon lowered the cost for the cars, I did the Tesla dip sale for my group where I lowered the price significantly for my group. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down there, at least see what all you get and see if it's right for you. Again, when Tesla stock rallies again, the sale goes away. So make sure you check out the pinned comment and see everything that you get. All right, guys, so I'm gonna play this interview for you. And I honestly, I was shocked by it. And we'll talk about it as it kind of goes through it. And remember, this guy, and I'm just gonna kind of set the table right here up front. This guy is clearly biased against Tesla, but that does not mean he does not make some excellent points. And I mean some excellent points about Elon, about Tesla, about a lot of things that you absolutely, if you don't take these things seriously, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble with your Tesla long-term in regards to holding the stock. So we'll kind of separate what's biased, what's not, and all that good stuff like that. But just keep in mind, just because somebody's biased, does not mean everything they say is biased or not true in the first place. It's not an extreme. You can be somewhat in the middle, have some biased takes and have some things that are very, very true and you absolutely need to consider. And this is exactly what this guy did. So let's jump into the video here and see what this guy has to say. Right now, talk about Tesla and the broader electric vehicle market is John McNeil. He's the co-founder and CEO of DVX Ventures. He's a member of GM and Lululemon's boards and a former executive at Lyft and Tesla. Are you wearing... So there you go. He's currently, you know, with GM, but he was a former board member of Tesla and Lyft as well, I guess, but that's irrelevant to this conversation. But you can see right there, you know, he is currently part of GM, which of course is a huge competitor to Tesla. And of course he has a background with Tesla. So you got to kind of keep that in mind there in regards to when you're listening to him and kind of, you know, like I said, don't attack the guy. Don't be just crazy. Oh, no matter what he says, it's always going to be biased. Well, it, yes and no, it doesn't mean they can't give very true, very good takes and additionally to the other not so good takes. So anyways, that's this guy's background here. Lululemon. I, uh, possibly I am Lululemon head to toe today. Head to toe. Yeah. Head to toe. Okay. I'm here just to sell you Lululemon. Suit. Just yeah. want to make sure. No yeah. You got the whole. No. White shirts? Yes, white shirts. Yes, that's they do. Good. What do you think? That's a Lululemon jacket? No. It's a Lululemon jacket. Yes, they do jacket. a way. Yeah, yes. they do a suit now. Yeah, it's fantastic. These are, uh, you know, I have these. Okay, well, you guys could. I'm totally, I'm wondering how much you got paid to say that. <laughs> Maybe not, but I mean, geez. Talk about uh, free press right there. Well, you know, we, 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 we're going to, we'll that's talk, all I have. Yeah. We'll talk clothing in just a second. Okay. But what do you make of this whole idea of these shareholders? We've had a bunch of them even come on the program now. Yeah. You signed this letter saying, look, you're doing too much, Elon. It's just too much. What do you think of that? I don't think he's all that uh, distracted away from the business. Like on the earnings call, he was answering questions at a really deep level, like on how the C++ neural nets work. Right. Like he is, he's involved and he has always had a lot going on, but he, he is incredible at managing his schedule and staying involved on the key, uh, the absolutely key topics. Uh, and you see, like they, they are still delivering more cars than they've ever delivered. I think anybody in the car business would love a 36 comp right. on a quarter. And he's got a lot of margin to play See, with. Uh, by the way, I'm... See, and right there, right off the bat, he makes some excellent, excellent points. One, we've talked about it a lot here. I don't care. He's always been one of the best at managing his time. He's always had multiple companies and it's always been, right? He starts one and then it's like, oh, he's going to be distracted, too much going on. And then he starts another and then it just kind of goes on and on and on and on with Elon. And of course, now we got the Twitter saga and all that good stuff. Of course, that's kind of mo the most public one that's kind of played out in the public eye. Uh, a lot of it because Elon has chosen to play it out in the public eye and such. But the point being, this guy's saying, hey, he handles it just fine. He's one of the best, if not the best, at handling his schedule. And that's not a distraction for Tesla. And then I agree with him, right? I mean, if he's biased, that's the, he's doing a terrible job of, you know, showing that, you know, Tesla's a problem or whatever the case is that would help his uh, position with GM. He's basically giving you guys facts right there right off the start. And then he talks about delivery numbers and would love that sort of growth with the, obviously with GM, you know, who he's representing. And of course he also talks about the margins that everybody else wishes that they had as well. So he starts right off the bat 
One, telling you exactly, basically the bull case for Tesla and for Elon, and a lot of the shareholder, you know, that shareholder letter or whatever the heck it was that people are worried about, hey, you guys got nothing to worry about here. This guy can handle this. And clearly they can because he's able to get on an earnings call and talk very, very deep about what's going on. And additionally, they're still delivering overall. They're performing. They're performing. A lot of other companies would love to have that sort of performance. So, you know, basically hoo-pooing all over the entire uh, idea of the letter and all the, the, a lot of the base narrative, you know, bear cases, he does it right there. So this is why, you know, if you've listened to this interview or you saw him and they immediately said, oh, he's a board member of GM and you clicked off and you moved on, you may have missed some pretty good information there right off the bat. Something that's confirming you from a competitor that's telling you, you know, a lot of things that we think or we see happening are actually there. It's not just a media narrative. It's actually happening. So right there, right off the bat, uh, he's basically <laughs> praising Tesla and praising Elon. I don't disagree with you. What I can't figure out is, it, let's say he was paying more attention. What, what, what would the result what would be? Do? Yeah, what would you do about the general economic uh, uh, environment? Uh, right. Exactly. Uh, and because they've got a lot of margin, they're using that as a weapon. Uh, and uh, even though they cut prices six times this year, they still in the first quarter delivered more margin than anybody else in the industry. Are you a believer, though? That See, I mean, right there, just another... He kind of uh, shoot away the question of how much better would they be if he was there more often? And of course, it you know, becomes the law of diminishing returns and stuff like that. How much better can they execute? And he's without answering the question directly, he's answering the question with how much better can they execute? <laughs> how much better could it be? They're already delivering well and above everybody else. So again, great points by this guy. He's handling the, the other guy, by the way, I can't remember his name, but he's, he's always, I won't call it negative or bearish on Tesla, but he's definitely on that other side of the, you know, whatever the heck the debate is, he's definitely on that more negative side of the debate. There is this other issue, which is, you know, he's made a lot of promises to not just the shareholders, but frankly, the customers who bought the vehicles thinking that they're getting autonomous driving, right. full self-drive, all sorts of different component parts of the, the product that have not come to fruition. I, I say that somewhat politely because I do know some owners of these cars that are like genuinely upset because they think they were sold a bill of goods. Yeah, I think he's he is good at delivering eventually on promises, but not on time on his promises. And that's gotta be frustrating for customers. And I think now you see competition coming both on the EV side and on the autonomous vehicle side. Right. And I think they're feeling that competition for sure. But what you want to, Right there, uh, and again, the first point that he made, I don't agree, right there, there's the first time I should have said that. He's basically started off saying, hey, Elon's really good at eventually delivering, just not on time. It's 100% true. He's always ultra aggressive with his timelines, and uh, you know, right now, especially with you know FSD, he's been, we're going on, we're getting close to a decade of promising it's gonna be the next year, and it's not the next year. Those are facts. He's stating the facts. Now, the idea that the competition is coming, Okay, that's I don't believe that one either. That's kind of the first time where he's kind of giving you that biased take that I don't know what GM has cooking over there, but apparently it's somehow going to compete with FSD, um, at least in his mind. That to me is the first thing he said that you know I don't agree with, or I think it's just uh, you know very very biased feeling about it. However, that just because that's biased doesn't make the first part of what he said not true. The first part of what he said is true. Elon promises big and then doesn't deliver. And they're speaking specifically about FSD. And yeah, it was frustrating if you bought a Tesla eight years ago thinking you're going to have full self-driving the next year and you don't. And you still don't. <laughs> you know, here we are eight years later and you still don't. Um, buy the newest Tesla, pay for it, pay for the, the service and everything, and you still don't have it. So um, do I think that's intentional on Elon's part or anything nefarious? No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not meaning to go there at all. What I am saying is, is when somebody says he makes big promises and he eventually delivers, that's true. That's fact. And we can point to multiple things that he says every single year that's coming within the next year. Or, you know, if it's 20, you know, 2020, it's coming in 2021. That just doesn't happen. And it just doesn't deliver. And that's part of him being, uh, you know, bombastic and forward leaning and kind of part of his personality type and all that sort of stuff. But it also doesn't make it not fact that there are going to be people who are very, very frustrated with that. Who are going to be frustrated with, hey, I thought I paid for one thing. And here we are years later after you promised it and it still hasn't happened yet. Absolutely, you know, maddening and can be maddening for those folks that bought those vehicles. However, I also don't agree with, you know, on the flip side of that, that, you know, GM's got something cooking that's going to all of a sudden may creep up there and catch Elon by surprise or something like that. Just not happening either. Or this year was he said, look, 
by the end of this year, I think we're going to have full autonomous driving, and that's where we're going to make it up on the margin, right? Yes. He, think, he yeah. thinks that he's saying, look, we'll take a lower margin today because I'm going to be able to really get margin later. Right. And I think there's some investors, at, least, at minimum, who are saying, are you really going to be able to get margin later? Because A, there's all of these other car companies that are doing EVs that are going to try to take your margin. And B, is this full self-driving thing, robo-taxis, and all the, all the ways you think you're capturing this margin in the future, is that, is that a realistic future? Yeah, I think that's what he's asking you to believe as an investor is, can you make this up in the future with software uh, software revenues and other revenues that right. are going to come in off the car? That's what you're being asked to believe as an investor. And I'm asking you what where you would land on that. I think uh, I think the market is kind of speaking on that. I think in in the long term, this is a huge market. There are mar Yeah, I, he'll get into the long term there in a second, but it dovetails perfectly in the point. Um, yes. That's what he's asking you to bank on. That's where kind of the problem lies. I personally think RoboTaxi, FSD, all that sort of stuff, not only has to actually get solved, which who knows if that's this year, two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, nobody knows. Then it has all the regulatory hoops, which to me, that is at least a two to four year process for it all to get through all that. So yes, as an investor, you know, he may be asking you now to pay for something that he says is coming by the end of the year that I know has no shot, even if he solves it by the end of the year, has no shot at getting through the regulatory process, at least here in the US for multiple years. So yeah, he's right. The market is trading off of that because they're kind of going, hey, we, we care about the margins more because the margins aren't gonna be made up in the short term, at least in the next year, two years, three years, whatever the timeline is that they're looking at, it's not gonna happen from all those different software pieces, you know, RoboTaxi, FSD, FSD, excuse me, and all those things like that. It's not happening in that short of a time frame, so they're not going to be willing to pay for it right now. Right now, they're looking at, hey, you're capturing market share, which for me, again, long term, this is great. But we've discussed it many, many times here on this channel. I mean, I just think it's we're, we're five, six, seven, eight years away from that being a huge revenue driver on the bottom line in regards to by the time it's all the way there, fully functioning, fully you know regulated and legal across you know all 50 states and all the different municipalities and all the different local municipalities and everything else that has to happen in order for this thing to really be a cash cow that Tesla thinks it's going to be. And I do think it's going to be. And clearly this guy thinks it's going to be too. You know, it's just, it's just some years off. And, you know, again, Elon's saying it's going to be the end of this year. Maybe, you know, the expectation, you know, does Wall Street believe it or not? Well, you know, we all know Wall Street's looking, what, three months out, six months out, maybe a year out at the max. And I'm unfortunately have to agree with Wall Street that I don't think this is going to be printing cash in a year. I just don't. Will it eventually? Yes. He's going to already talk about that right here. He's probably seeing the same exact thing, but that doesn't mean that investors are going to be willing to pay for something that right now could be three years away, could be five years away, could be eight years away. We don't know. There's no definitive timeline because it's not even solved yet, much less through all the other regulatory hoops and everything else. So that, I see where he's going there with that. And I absolutely understand that. And I understand why investors aren't willing to pay for that right now. Unfortunately, the valuation has to come down because the earnings are coming down. Those are just facts. We can't argue those. Those are in the numbers. I think it's a good long-term move. However, in the short term, there's going to be pain like we've discussed many, many times. Leader, They've got market-leading margins. Uh, and so as an investor, you're investing into a space that could be 10 times larger, right. literally in five years than it is today. Yeah. So yeah. even with... But as an automobile company or as this other thing, because right now it's still... To capture this type of valuation, yes. even even this valuation, you have to believe it's something else. That's right, uh, because they're valued at 10x their competition. And right. So you've got to believe that there's something else, and that competition is coming now with autonomous vehicles. Like okay, but so you, you used to work. See right there, they're coming with autonomous. No, they're not. <laughs> They'll get there eventually. I understand everybody will be able to get to autonomous at some point in time in the future. Regulars may even force Tesla to give away all the tech. Uh, not not the hardware or anything else like that, but give away all the data. Um, so that way you can have full self-driving in all vehicles. So that way all vehicles do have that ability whenever it gets regulated out and everything else like that. Um, in regards to them being valued at 10X the time, well, I would say even if Tesla never becomes more than a car company, it is always going to demand a higher valuation because when you look at the companies financially, on both sides, they cannot be any different. Tesla does not have the giant debt burden that all Legacy Auto has. It does not have all the other albatrosses around the company that Legacy Auto has. So of course it's gonna have a better multiplier because it's essentially a new type of car company. That's, that's, I don't know how else to describe it other than you just, 
basically need to draw a line and understand that, hey, Legacy Auto is just, I don't know, I don't, they just have albatrosses all over their balance sheets, their income statements, all over all their financials that they can never get out from under in a lot of cases. You know, they can't ever get out from underneath all that. So they're always going to be bound in a certain range and therefore you're only gonna be able to get a certain growth number. All these things are all true and they're only gonna be able to squeeze so much profit or take out debt in order to show a profit. Different discussion for a different time. Whereas opposed to Tesla is not in that case. They could easily pay everything off tomorrow and they have plenty of cash on the balance sheet to continue to move forward. And they don't have any albatrosses around the business. So to me, they should be different multiples to begin with because they are basically, in terms of what they put out into the world is exactly the same in regards to how they are run. It is so starkly different. If I could just uh, take the two uh, sets of financials, set them in front of somebody and basically erase the names from the top and erase anything in regards to what they do, Somebody would look at Tesla and think that they are looking at something different than all the other, all the other, you know, the GMs, the Fords and all of them. They would all look exactly the same. Everybody would be able to point out, oh, okay, these cars are all, or I'm sorry, these companies that we can't tell what they are are all within the same industry. They all look very, very similar. And then this one over here looks like it's totally something different. That's why the multiple is totally something different. Now, as outrageous as sometimes the multiple Tesla gets, I would agree, it does get outrageous at times. However, it doesn't mean that it should immediately default back to the other extreme and be right there at the same multiple as the rest of the car company. So again, that's just like everything else we've been talking about here. We don't need to take it to extremes and it's not an absolute here or it's here. It can be somewhere in the middle. And in this case, it doesn't need to go all the way back to the car companies. However, you don't need to value it like a high flying software company or somebody like that um, because they're just never going to have those types of margins. So you got to kind of find that medium ground. Where does it lie? And that's, that's going to be the question investors have to answer over the long term. You know. Yeah. So is there something else? There is there is a lot of capability to deliver margins off of that uh, off of that platform, those cars. But uh, GM's got a very similar strategy and a very similar capability, and others do too. Right. So this space becomes more crowded I have for one sure. Question about not the distraction piece, but the ecosystem that is Elon, which is to say, one of the things you keep hearing about is so he's he has Twitter, he's now talking about doing generative AI. He's got SpaceX. There is this sense that, and he owns Twitter outright as a, a private company, Twitter, Tesla, public company, SpaceX, private company, but lots of investors in there. Yeah. He does move these engineers around from place to place to place to place to help in specific moments. There was a period of time where we heard that a lot of Tesla engineers were showing up on the doorstep of Twitter to try yeah. to assess what's really happening. Folks at SpaceX, now that now in the whole generative AI situation, how that's, and he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of AI folks inside Tesla that he's going to want to use in other places. How should a shareholder feel about that? In the, in the sort of normal context, there would be people who'd say, no, 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 you, yeah. that guy works for, for you over here. He does not work for you over here. It drives, believe it or not, some massive breakthroughs. There are, there are SpaceX uh, metal, uh, metallurgy engineers, uh, materials engineers, who've really transformed the way that Model Y gets produced. Right. And so you get these big breakthroughs by moving that talent and context switching them. So yeah, I can understand one side of the story where investors are upset. Uh, the other side of the story that doesn't really get told is how much value they add back to Tesla uh, as they come in and help. Well, there you go right there. At the end, he once again... Could have taken the easy route, especially as, you know, a GM board member and say, yeah, you're right. You know, what is he doing over there? That's not the appropriate way to run a car company that he's taking away deal, uh, taking away, you know, from Tesla. And he basically pointed out rightfully so. No, he's actually doing the exact opposite. It is actually helping Tesla in the long run become better, more efficient, driving better margins, all of those things like that. So, I mean, just a masterful job of, yes, I don't agree with the fact that GM's got something to, and you know they're coming and all this other stuff like that. I don't agree with that. Um, it doesn't mean that they won't eventually get there or anything else like that. You know, I'm not one of those folks that thinks just all oh, automakers are all gonna go out of business. And it's just gonna be only Tesla's on the road or anything else like that. I don't believe any of that at all either. Um, but again, this is why I don't dismiss when I hear somebody talking. Uh, obviously there's some guys that get on there and they're clearly biased and that's all they do is just, they stick to just one side of the narrative and go all the way around. This guy clearly gave kind of some very, very positive feedback in regards to Elon, how he's handling it, how he runs the company. 
and basically, I won't say stuffing it in those guys' faces, but those guys generally get a much easier time. And I think they thought that interview was gonna go a little bit differently than it actually did. Um, so overall, it was one of those things where I was expecting one thing, I got something completely different. And so I wanted to make sure I brought those to you so that way we can kind of see uh, an outsider's, not just my perspective, but an outsider's perspective um, on Tesla, who clearly has some insight into Tesla intimately, but also is part of the competition and kind of gives you some insight into that they're just not blind. Uh, they are, they do know what's going on. They are seeing what's going on. And remember to check out the pinned comment down there and get the Tesla dip sale on my group. I, I guess it's, uh, gosh, hopefully it doesn't dip forever. I'll be in trouble then. But anyways, uh, yeah, check it out down there and see if the group's right for you. And click this video here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see exactly what my plan is for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.